Here we are. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Episode number three of WandaVision. Now, I'm going to try to shorten these reviews up just because of the response I'm getting to the videos. So let's not waste any time and let's get right in to episode three, now in color. How are you? Welcome back. We start with a great 70s style montage of the intro to the show, which is obviously an homage, like I said, to the decade of the 70s, the Brady Bunch style without, you know, as many squares as the Brady Bunch had because we've only got our two main characters, Wanda and Vision, which I thought it was hilarious. I really love the old TV shows, as I've said in my previous reviews, that it's such a cool aesthetic and really big props to Marvel for doing such a wonderful job creating this you know, uh, rehash of all these old school type shows. So that's that's it for the intro. Like I said, man, I enjoyed that part of it. I thought it was cool. The theme song, which I'm not going to play, was fun. You heard a little taste of it at the beginning. But let's just dive right into this episode. This isn't going to be a long review. As I said, I don't want to spend all day doing this one. I've got stuff to do. The outside of the house establishing shot is such a hallmark of 70s sitcoms, though. Isn't it a nice touch? The Doctor was a classic chauvinistic 70s archetype and also made for a funny sequence, especially when he tries to explain to them and answer the question wrong that Vision asked. When a man and a woman love each other very much. Speaking of classic 70s chauvinism, then there's this line. We let the little ladies keep tabs on their growing babies with fruit. Makes it simple for them. As Vision sees the doctor out of the house, he's inquiring at how this happens. He's still kind of confused. And the doctor makes a statement about leaving to go to Bermuda on a vacation, which might seem arbitrary and minuscule, but pay attention because we'll bring this back up later on in the review. I'm off to Bermuda, baby. Then we see Vision telling Herb he might have taken his hedge trimming a little too far as he's cutting through the brick wall, which I believe is a metaphor for what's going on with Sword and Wanda right now on the exterior of this veneer. Then we get Vision talking about the nesting phase, which we go through a montage of. Of course, I'll show you a little bit of that, but his delivery on the line is funny uh, considering what Wanda's doing in the background while he's reading the book about parenting. Nesting. The overwhelming urge during pregnancy to clean, organize, and prepare the home for the new baby. Then we get the line that basically gives away the children's names, which fans of the comics will know. Billy and Tommy, Wiccan and Speed. Vision drops that. And for the casual fans, now you know there's going to be two. There's going to be twins. I can't wait to meet you, little Billy. Well, I was thinking Tommy. Just a... One and Vision going through the nesting montage is funny, and then there's a sequence where the power goes out there in the living room discussing that people might be figuring them out. Vision starts to make sense of it all, and it rewinds, and he starts over with his dialogue scene. This room is a hard dinner. Outside with her, I think something's wrong here, Wanda. They have an extremely funny sequence where they're just doing breathing exercises, Wanda kind of relaxes, and then it starts raining inside the house, which signifies that her water broke. Thanks. But first, let's take a brief pause for these messages from our sponsor, Hydra. Hydra Silk. Find the goddess within. And she uses a wind to dry everything. Vision leaves to get the doctor. Geraldine shows up, or Monica, at Wanda's house with a, to borrow a bucket. And she keeps her talking to distract her from the bird walking around the living room. And then Geraldine sees she's pregnant. So Vision goes and catches up with the doctor right before he's getting ready to leave on his vacation. And you see he's experiencing some car trouble, which, like I said, all this plays in to a scene in a one-off line that some people might have missed that I'll talk about. But Vision grabs him, takes him back to the house. Geraldine is trying to comfort Wanda while she's in labor. And with each contraction, things around the house happen as a result of Wanda's powers and magic making them happen. Lights flickering, things going off, the vacuum going, pictures spinning around, things of the like. Wanda gives birth to Tommy just before Vision and the doctor get back. And then, shortly thereafter, she goes back into labor and has Billy. So as Vision is walking the doctor out, he makes a remark about the doctor still being able to make his trip, and the doctor responds in an odd way. Small town, you know, so hard to escape. 
and you can see a moment of visible confusion as Vision ponders the meaning. So as Geraldine and Wanda are inside talking about the twins, Wanda makes this admission to Geraldine. I'm a twin. I had a brother. His name was Pietro. You can see something clicks in Geraldine as Wanda goes into her Sokovian accent and starts singing a little song you can tell that she probably knew from childhood. Then Geraldine says something to Wanda that makes her snap out of it and completely cast her out of this reality that Wanda has created to use as a coping mechanism. He was killed by Ultron, wasn't he? When Wanda realizes what she says... What did you say? She decides it is time for Geraldine to make her grand exit as she has shown her hand completely. Then Wanda notices the sword symbol around Geraldine's neck and immediately questions her about it as she's visibly confused of why she would be wearing that and how she's seen it. I, who are you? So while Monica Rambeau slash Geraldine is getting ready to be expelled from Wanda's reality outside, we have another situation brewing with Herb, Vision, and Agnes, which we're going to talk about here. Vision is outside, and he notices Herb cutting through his brick wall with his shears while he's trying to trim his hedges, and Agnes is there, and he has kind of an odd conversation with him, and they're very, they're acting very, very strange, and he picks up on it. Herb is in the process of explaining to Vision as to he asks about Geraldine, where she came from. Herb says she doesn't have a home, she's new here, and Vision says, well, she doesn't have a home, what do you mean? And you can see the look of concern in Agnes's eyes. And the next scene is very telling, and there's no way that Vision doesn't realize this. Herb makes a remark and says, we're all here. And Agnes turns to him and looks and kind of gives him the no, don't say any more look. And Herb just kind of shuts right down. And Vision is just visibly confused. To kind of throw him off, Agnes makes one of her little funny comments. Oh, this macrame is not going to hitch himself. Beeps a little horn on her bike and she takes off. Herb says, catch you on the flip side, Vision. And he goes in the house and Vision shakes and hurries and runs back in the house. So Vision rushes back in the house after his odd conversation with Herb and Agnes and finds Wanda standing there with the children. He asks, where's Geraldine? Wanda says she had to go. And she just stands there with this satisfied look on her face, but she kind of knows there's some underlying problems here in her reality. And if you're wondering exactly what happened to Miss Monica Rambeau or Geraldine, as it were, well, the end of the episode answers that question perfectly. Now, I wanted to put this image up on the screen so we could take a look at it. This is the town of Westview, and you can see it's all blocked off. A uh, sword has it surrounded. And I wondered initially how they were keeping tabs on Wanda, how they were watching her like this TV show. And this is a real place, but everything happening inside is based on Wanda's magic and her ability to turn this into her own reality, as far as what I can believe so far. I mean, I'm really hoping the end of the show provides a light into how this all was created, how S.W.O.R.D. got involved in this, how they found where she was, what she was doing, uh, were they tracking her from the very start? It, it's very, it's very cool. It's a very neat aesthetic, and I love the concept of it. But like I said, I thought alternate reality. I did not think she had an actual physical town around her. You know, I, I wasn't sure exactly how that was going to play out. But I like this direction. I really do. And you can see in this still that Monica, after she gets thrown out of Westview, is still kind of enveloped in Wanda's sort of magic, I believe it would be, uh, before the sword agents surround her, as we'll see in this next set of stills here. And you can tell that the sword agents have their forward operating base set up right outside of Westview as they're quick to respond to Geraldine getting thrown out, who they didn't know who it was at first. And you can kind of see the light poles they have set up shining around Westview to kind of keep an eye on things. That's her observation. And you know that's how the beekeeper made his way inside the borders of Westview and Wanda's kind of fantasy world that her mind has created to deal with the loss of vision. But that's it. That's the end of WandaVision Episode 3. And I think all hell is about to break loose in Wanda's faux reality. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Let's take this thing home, shall we? It's about that time. I think the ending provided a great cliffhanger for this episode. Uh, it was chocked full of goodness and 
things that you had to look out for that are going to lead forward into the next four to five episodes. I believe there's nine episodes this season. So what do you guys think, though? Let me know in the comments below. Now's the time to do all the YouTube things. I don't need to mention them. You know what they are. But seriously, I want to know what you guys think of this show. Do you think going into the back half of this, it's going to be more of the Avengers type stuff? Are we going to find out that Wanda's the villain like they alluded to in the description to the show? Let me know, guys. And remember to tune in tomorrow for episode 136. I'm Etepo Kuhn to the place to be reviews. I've been here with all of you. And remember, if I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow. And I'll catch you folks on the next one.